Welcome to the Hyper Polyglot Activist. Learn languages, make a difference. My name is Dr. Carlos Yerba Lopez, and today we're going to speak to Santi, and we're going to carry out a critique of the polyglot community. Stay tuned. Santi, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Thank mm -hmm. you for having me. Nice. Welcome to the show. Um, what we're going to do today is a critique of the polyglot community. So I thought it would be interesting to explain to our audience the difference between a critique and criticism, right? So whereas a criticism is typically judgmental and focuses on the faults or the shortcomings of that which we are criticizing, a critique is mostly descriptive and balanced. Now, that does not mean that they are mutually exclusive. Our critique, of course, is going to include some form of criticism, right? But it's not going to be just about that. And that criticism is not necessarily going to be just negative. So having said that, let's start by defining what the polyglot community is. So I'll give you what my understanding is, intuitive understanding. And then yes. you let me know whether you agree or, or there's some disagreement. So... To me, the polyglot community is fairly ethereal. It's nothing with clearly okay. defined boundaries, but I think a working definition can be the members of the online community, because I think it's fundamentally digital, of the online community that seek to learn languages on purpose, that okay. see serial language learning as a focus of what they do. Mm -hmm. Whether it is work-related or not is a different question. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, because when you say polyglot community, there you're including, including everyone within the so-called like language learning community. Yes, exactly. Okay, so it's more uh, inclusive. Because I, I thought you were talking about just uh, uh, polyglot YouTubers, you know, the uh, mm -hmm. public figures. Mm -hmm. uh, of the community, so mm, okay, I like it. Yeah, it's more uh, inclusive. It includes pretty one, pretty much everyone, right? Like it doesn't matter whether yeah you're well known or anything. Exactly. I mean, to me, to me, the YouTube sector will be like a section of influencers, but those influencers oh, yeah. wouldn't be influencers if their opinion didn't influence the rest of, of the people, like the bigger yeah. community. So yeah, they kind of need each other, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, okay. So, so we, we agree on that working definition, minimum bare bone definition of polyglot community. So now, before we get into the nitty gritty of our critique, including criticism, let's say yes. something positive about, about the polyglot community. Let's say, let's, let's talk about things we've learned from the polyglot community that will, we take on board in our everyday life. Uh, we like mm. to begin with that. Okay. Shall I start? Sure. So what, what, what positive things can you take from the polyglot community in general? Mm. Well, first of all, I uh, became a polyglot uh, by observing all the polyglots in the community. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty much uh, uh, an internet-created sort of uh, polyglot. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I entered university at a... 18 years old, I think. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I was a monolingual and I had to learn English. And what I did was spend a lot of time uh, trying to figure out the best way to learn languages, right? So that involved learning from those who were online. Mm -hmm. And that includes a lot of mm, those famous uh, YouTubers, the old school, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I did learn from them uh, a lot. But and I think people learn from from these uh, public figures, uh, you know, all these famous uh, polyglots like Luca Lampariello. That's an old one, mm -hmm. uh, not old, uh, you know what I mean. He's yeah, been <laughs> a, 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 usual, a, a usual suspect. Yeah, yeah. one <laughs> of those are always already there. Yes, yeah, those well-established polyglots, yeah. right? So yeah. I remember uh, being inspired by our uh, mm -hmm. He was very uh, a lot of he was a lot of fun with his reaction videos, and you know, I first at at first I learned from them, mm -hmm. as I didn't have any anything better to learn from. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I started learning linguistics. Uh, I'm actually mm -hmm. now a Spanish and English 
mm -hmm. uh, teacher. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually a, doctor, a doctoral student doing research mm -hmm. in uh, autonomous learning. So now I know more about the science behind uh, mm -hmm. learning, language mm -hmm. learning. So at that point, when I already learned quite a lot about this, I stopped uh, learning fr from them as much because it's pr it's pretty re repetitive. Yeah. I know we're, so we're we're supposed to talk about the the good things first, but it's repetitive. It gets repetitive. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so, so so that's very interesting because in my case, it wasn't exactly as yours. In my case, say I started learning English at a school like everybody else, then French, oh, then German too. at university, and only after I was already a polyglot, I came across these oh, okay. these figures and. I can't really remember when exactly this started, but I will say around the time I started my PhD, so 2014, something like that, 2014, 2015. Okay. And I think you said something very interesting, which is the fact that once you got into linguistics or the science of language, then yes. that allow you to see the many shortcomings of the polyglot community, right? And, and it's a sentiment that, that, I, that I share. Uh, positive things that I will rescue from the polyglot community is First of all, understanding. Yeah. Because yeah. I was first a polyglot and then I came across this community. When I was a polyglot, I, I, I used to live in Zaragoza, which is mm. a medium-sized city. So you wouldn't find a lot of polyglots necessarily. And learning about the existence of this community <laughs> gave me a sense of identification and, and understanding. Well, yes. somebody is as obsessed or even much more than me uh, <laughs> about languages, right? So that was positive. Yeah. It's a community of people who share the same uh, interest. Then materials. I remember oh, when yeah. I joined IPEA, for instance, they had a wealth of materials to learn a lot of languages, Esperanto, Spanish, French. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about free materials online that you can download on a yes. PDF. Uh, encouragement, obviously. And then inspiration. You can always, by seeing people with whom you are friends speaking a language that you consider difficult, you, you can sort of tell yourself, well, if they can do it, then I can do it. So it must mm. not be something as exotic as I first thought. Yes. Oh, speaking Chinese, it sounds so far away. But then you see one of your friends is speaking it after a few months mm. and you say, well, then maybe I can learn from this person who's not that far away from. Mm. And actually, yeah, I think that's completely true. And that's, what, in my opinion, is the most positive, uh, you know, the most positive side of mm -hmm. uh, the community. Because, um, as I was telling you, like, uh, there's a point where there, the advice people give, it's not uh, good enough, or, mm -hmm. you know, it's not deep enough. Uh, what's great about the community is that you can always find uh, solace in the suffering of other people, right? Because right. we all suffer <laughs> during the yeah. process of learning new languages. So they definitely encourage people. Uh, they definitely uh, share personal experiences, right? They may be going through, people mm -hmm. relate to that. Actually, there's also a more psychological element um, about, of, on this, about this because I think that anyone who has been within the community knows that there's a lot of people who feel very alone, a lot of people looking for uh, people to connect with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, many, many people have come out uh, within the community with uh, mental uh, issues. And I think that the fact that they can come uh, here to the community to share their, their problems and they support mm -hmm. each other also. So that's very positive. So, yeah, the personal element of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there is definitely a therapeutic element. And I remember a presentation by Arueles in the Polyglot Conference in Slovenia, in Ljubljana, where he uh, proved statistically that mental disorders, so-called mental disorders, because, again, yes. that begs the question of who classifies them as such and so on, uh, yes. are overrepresented in the, in the polyglot community. Yeah. Oh, Particularly the, the autistic okay. spectrum, I have an interview about that too. Uh, yeah, definitely. So and so... Okay. So it's a thing, right? Uh, yeah. it, this yeah. was just my observation, but okay, there's data. Yeah, it is. It is statistically a thing, yes.